Uh, you've heard me talk a lot about the notion that people have both rights and responsibilities to each other and to our country. And I think everyone agrees that the state must always provide a safety net for New Zealanders who have fallen on hard times. And that's not in dispute here. <clears throat> and state houses will always play a very important part of that safety net. But it is a sad fact that a, no a small number of people actually abuse their right to state housing. People in New Zealand are privileged to have the right to be housed by the taxpayer, but with that right also comes responsibilities. We've all heard the horror stories about Kainga or tenants who are so threatening, so abusive, so violent that their neighbours live in fear every day. We've all seen the photos of Kaingora homes that have been systematically, deliberately trashed by the very people who get to live there on the taxpayer's dollar. It's certainly not fair to the neighbours of those abusive tenants, many of whom are fellow Kaingora tenants, to have to live in fear or to have sleepless nights each and every week. And it's certainly not fair to the thousands of people on the social housing wait list, many of whom are families with young children who are waiting for a home and would treat that home with the love and the respect that it deserves. Today, we're saying enough is enough. Finance Minister Nicola Willis and Housing Minister Chris Bishop, who joins me here today, have sent a letter of expectations to the board of Kainga Ora, instructing them to end the sustaining tenancies framework, the policy that has effectively stopped evictions of those who abuse their responsibilities as Kainga Ora tenants. Ending sustaining tenancies is also part of the National Act Coalition Agreement. Kainga Ora has been told to take stronger measures against disruptive tenants, and those measures could include eviction for severe and persistent cases. I want to be very clear, very clear, that the vast majority of Kainga Ora tenants are already doing the right thing. They look after their homes and they are courteous to their neighbours and they pay their rent. They are appreciative of their fellow citizens who are subsidising their living through the taxes that those workers pay. But for those who choose to repeatedly engage in disruptive and in threatening or damaging behaviour, from now on there will be consequences. And I'll pass to Minister Chris Bishop to talk a little bit more about that detail. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. As the Prime Minister has said, uh, Finance Minister Nicola Willis and I have uh, sent an interim letter of expectations to the Board of Kainga Ora Homes uh, and Communities. Now it's slightly unconventional to send an interim letter because, uh, of course, uh, as you'll all know, they're going through that review uh, led by Sir Bill English. But we've uh, taken this step to make sure that Kainga Ora is focused on the right things uh, right now. So in that letter, we've laid out our expectation that uh, KO focuses on its core functions. Uh, those are, firstly, replacing the sustaining tenancies framework and strengthening the management of disruptive tenants, which the Prime Minister has talked to. We have uh, asked Kainga Ora to, in fact, we've directed them uh, to make better use of the tools in the Residential Tenancies Act 1986. That will include formal warning notices, relocations and in severe uh, and persistent cases terminating tenancies. We've also asked Kainal Aura to address a concerning escalation in rent arrears. Between 2017 and 2023, the amount of rent owed to Kainal Aura increased from $1 million to $21 million. Uh, due, in good part, we believe, to the Sustaining Tenancies Framework, where tenants were not evicted even if they stopped paying rent. At the end of last year, more than 450 Kainal Aura tenants each owed more than $10,000 in rent. Uh, owing a huge amount in rent isn't good for anyone, not the taxpayer and not the tenants themselves, and Kainal Aura has been instructed to fix that. We've also uh, instructed Kainal Aura to tenant vacant properties as quickly as possible, and I've talked about this before at the start of the year. The fact is that at any given time there are thousands of Kainal Aura properties sitting vacant, uh, and of the newly built KO homes last year, 20% of, of them sat vacant for more than a month after completion. And as you know, the wait list is 25,000 strong. Uh, many of those people are waiting anxiously for a state house. We want those people off, state, off the wait list and into a state house. We've also instructed Kainal Aura to work hard to deliver new social housing places and lines uh, in line with targets. Uh, we expect them to meet those targets and to keep us updated along the way. And we've asked them to uh, deliver value for money in its spending. Uh, again, this is fairly self-explanatory. We are working hard as a coalition government to get the economy back on track. That means uh, Kainal Aura, homes and communities, along with every government agency, needs to make sure they uh, deliver value for money for every dollar uh, they spend. As uh, you know, there's an independent review into KO uh, underway, being led by Sir Bill English. I can um, advise you that uh, we're expecting a report back on that at the end of the month. 
uh, and then ministers will be taking time to carefully consider those recommendations and getting advice on them more needed, uh, uh, getting advice on them where, where we need to. And after that, we'll be in a position to, to make more public comment around, around that. Um, over to you, Prime Minister. And with that, very happy to take your questions. Prime, Prime, Prime Minister, how many people will be homeless uh, as a result of this policy? Change? Well, what this is all about is actually fairness. Uh, what is not right at the moment is there are no consequences for people being behind in their rents uh, or, importantly, also being disruptive tenants. And so the reality is it's not fair to those tenants uh, of Kaingora that are actually paying their salaries, It's also not uh, paying their rents. It's also not fair to, frankly, um, those that are on the wait list. Uh, that's just we want to get a house. I appreciate that, but do you have any oversight as to how many people are using the service now and how therefore may then end up in, in homelessness? Say the question again. So how many people are in this in this framework now or part of this framework and how many people may end up homeless? Well every every kind or a tenant is subject to sustaining tendencies. We're asking, in fact directing kind or to end that framework and to take uh, stronger action uh, against people who breach their obligations as kind or tenants. Uh, there are hundreds uh, of kind or tenants uh, who over the last uh, few years uh, have engaged in disruptive, antisocial, uh, in some cases, in many cases, illegal behaviour. Uh, we're saying to Kainga Ora, uh, you need to uh, use the tools that are legally at your disposal already uh, in order to take action against those tenants. And I think well, homeless people, as a result. No, that's not a, that's not the uh, the right uh, implication of what I'm saying. Actually, what we're saying is Kainga Ora has tools available under the law right now to use against tenants who breach uh, their tenancy agreements. Mm. Essentially, sustaining tenancies have meant that Kainga Ora has not been using those tools that are legally at their disposal, that every other landlord, uh, including private sector landlords, uh, have at their disposal. We're saying what's good, what's good for private landlords uh, should be good for Kainga Ora because it's in the interests of the tenants themselves and it's also in the interests of neighbours and it's in the interest of taxpayers as well. Hang on, guys, just we'll go one at a time, Jason. How do you see this playing out in terms of the use of this um, new policy? Do you see it as a blunt tool to come down on people hard or something as a bit of a deterrent to say that there is actually going to be consequences now? Where does this sort of balance lie here? Well, look, there's a clear process, as there is with all sanctions, essentially. There's lots of advance warning. The easiest thing for a tenant to do is to get themselves um, meeting their obligations and, and uh, being in compliance with their, their behaviour as a, as a good tenant of KO. Uh, the reality is this is about fairness. You, you know, we, have, we have a huge waiting list of, I think, over 24,000 people. It's gone up 20,000 people over the period of the last six years. Those are families that are desperate to get a state house. They would love the privilege of being able to have one. And as a result, and as a result the reality is we're not there to accommodate people who don't want to hold up their end of the deal. Uh, that's Those very simple. that are going to be evicted, where do you expect them to go? Uh, well, the, the first instance is for people to change their behaviour. So I'll give you, some, give you some numbers. Um, there are hundreds of serious incidences every month. So um, from August to October last year, there were 207 per month. There were 335 per month from mm -hmm. November 2023 through to January uh, 2024. Now, serious incidents include alleged illegal activity, harassment, intimidation, threatening behaviour and verbal abuse. That is unacceptable. That is not the way in which people should live their lives. If you are a kainga or a tenant, you should be behaving in the same way that everybody else behaves uh, in, in, in society. And uh, if you engage in this sort of behaviour, uh, then our instruction to Kainga Ora is for them to use the tools that are that are at their disposal. And so the first instance, it should be that people mm. change their behaviour uh, and make sure that they don't engage in that sort of behaviour, which is causing disruption and mayhem for neighbours, uh, friends and family, uh, and people who live in these communities. That's the, the first thing. will be put on notice as well. So you sent the interim letter to KO, and now you expect them the tenants to now be put on notice? Well, I'm fairly sure these announcements will get a bit of wide publicity. And so have, but will you be doing, will you be requesting that they give uh, tenants official notice that they are now, that they have been put on yep. um, notice themselves? And how long will that period be? Y yes, uh, the, short, the short answer is yes, and that will be the responsibility of Kainga Ora. We, we as ministers and as the government have sent this letter of expectation, we therefore we now expect Kainga Ora to implement that letter of expectation, and that will involve uh, communication with, with tenants of Kainga Ora. Sorry, guys, can we go to... Sorry, sorry, you, sorry, you, can, you, sorry, Brody, can we go to Jenna and then Joe? You keep talking about fairness um, and the amount of families that are on that state house wait list. Do you have the numbers for how many of those 
um, breaches, those hundreds of breaches every month. How many of those people have kids living in the house and where do those kids go? Uh, the short point is no, but we can, we can get that for you. But, but where do the kids go? Well, it, it, you're presupposing that those tenants will be automatically evicted from those houses. Okay, so our first, the first reason we are doing this is to make, is to send a message that tenants who engage in this sort of behaviour need to change their behaviour. At the end of the day, there has to be a backstop for the government to say, if you continue to persistently and repeatedly engage in this sort of behaviour, there has to be a backstop for the mm. government to say, enough is enough, I'm sorry, you can't continue to engage in this sort of behaviour. So we, we don't want to kick people out of Kainga or Aura properties. We don't want to evict people. But the sustaining tenancies framework has meant that people essentially know that there is no, at the end of the day, one of the consequences will not be eviction from a, a Kainga or a property. That has meant bad behaviour, rising bad behaviour, and also, frankly, people not paying their rent. That's why, and partly why we have $17 million. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No child will be made homeless by this change in policy. No Kiwi child. Well, what we can guarantee is that there's already ch Kiwi children today that are waking up in pretty scungy motels and in pretty suboptimal conditions that their family is on a wait list trying to get one of these houses. And so I just say, I just say, no child will what, be made homeless by this. Well, what I'd say to you is actually, if you think about the, if it's bad for the neighbours dealing with unruly tenants who are actually abusing them and threatening them, it's pretty bad for the, the so kids that are involved in those families. And we'd like to see the government agencies homeless. involved with those families so if they're not already doing so. Will there be a different policy if? If there are children living in the home, is there, is there a different set of criteria for a tenant to be evicted if there are kids living in the home? That, that's an ultimately a policy decision for Kainga Aura as part of how they... The policy it, decisions. Is, are you comfortable if yeah, kids are being evicted? There's a, there's a, we are directing them to update their policies to take a stronger stance against uh, tenants uh, who engage in antisocial behaviour, the implementation of that policy will now be over to Kainga Aura and we will, of course, be following up as ministers as to what but that the, policy but the means But the practice. simple thing is that for that tenant is to get themselves compliant and to meet their obligations. That's the first and foremost thing. If you, uh, the kid doesn't have any control. Sure, and as a result, that's why if I, if I, I'll just say to you if that those are the behaviours that we're seeing that are pretty aggressive and pretty threatening uh, within neighbourhoods of Kayangora communities. I'll just say to you, I think we would need to have agencies in with those families immediately as well. Do you guys, Chris, have, you guys to... have thought about the kids? Because <coughs> you came here, Minister, armed with the number of unruly tenants, but you didn't have the numbers that Jenna asked for of, of how many of those people had children living with them. So did you even think about... The kids you oh, we're thinking about the kids that are actually on that state house wait list that are actually in pretty suboptimal housing conditions, and their families would love to get a state house. But you don't have any uh, so idea those are the ones that we're thinking about as well. But are you not thinking about the children that are currently in state We are, houses? we are. Yes, and as I said to you, I imagine that there'll be government agencies involved where we see extreme threatening and abusive behaviour from their parents to their communities. Are they also involved in this policy? Sorry? Is Oranga Tamariki, are they also involved in this policy rollout? Well, they may well be, as 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 a range of issues get heightened if there's, a, if there's behavioural issues within a family or abuse within a family or a bad environment for kids to be within a family. That's what I said before, I would expect the government agencies to be deployed as as they often are. But what I'm saying is, at this point in time, we, we can you cannot take a state house and not hold your deal up. You cannot take your responsibility seriously, that actually you've been given that house or subsidised to that house because Kiwis who are waking up this morning, going to work, paying their taxes, actually get that, subsidise that living of, that, of you in that place and you need to respect that and need to be, and hold up that responsibility.